wewe na kupenda ni nani We worship you, Father. 
We worship you, Jehovah. We invite your presence, Jehovah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. When you come away, Baba. There's our prayer and confession tonight, Jehovah. There's none like you, my Father and my God. There's none to be worshipped and to be glorified, Jehovah. That's why we can stand, oh God, and proclaim of your goodness, Jehovah. Thank you, God, for the fire you have brought us, O oh King of glory. As a church, as a family, Jehovah, we can just stand and say that you are Ebenezer, Jehovah. Come and bless us once more, my God. We glorify your name, oh my God, because there's none like you to be worshipped, O oh King of glory. Come and take control tonight night, my Father. May you forgive us our sins, Jehovah. Make us worthy, Jehovah, once again before your throne, my Father. As we start talking of glory, we start with you, my God and my Father. Come and take charge, my God, because you are faithful and your love endures forever. In Jesus' name, I pray and give thanks. Amen. Let us give our God a mighty clap. Let us keep appreciating God. Even wherever you are watching us, just appreciate God wherever we go, we, you are. Because I know God is a faithful and a loving Father. Let us hear our reading for today. Our reading for today is taken from the book of Jonah. The book of Jonah from the Old Testament, chapter 2. Jonah chapter 2. From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. He said, In my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From the depths of the grave, I called for help, and you listened to my cry. You hurled me into the deep, into the very heart of the seas and the currents swirled about me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. I said, I have been banished from your sight. Yet I will look again towards your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me. The deep surrounded me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. To the roots of the mountains I sank down. The earth beneath barred me in forever. But you brought my life up from the pit, O oh Lord, my God. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord. And my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols forfeit the grace that could be theirs. But I with a song of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will make good. Salvation comes from the Lord. And the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah on to dry land. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Anne, for the reading. And I just want to challenge someone wherever you are, maybe watching us. Probably today you woke up in your working environment, in your office, or maybe at home, wherever you may be. You've had a rough day. You've, had, you've faced many challenges. And probably you are asking yourself, God, where are you? The same way when Jonah was in the belly of the fish, when he realized that God still is God, he went back, he examined his ways and turned back to God. And he cried to God saying, in my distress, I called to the Lord and he answered me. And from the depths of the grave, I called for help and you listened to my cry. And uh, you may be wondering where God is. 
or even wherever you are in time of distress, especially these times when things are not easy, just remember that the Lord is there watching for you. And when you call upon him, he is ready to listen to you. And so to be encouraged this evening, our spiritual father is ready to give us the word of the Lord this evening. I want to call upon the praise and worship to give us our worship, even as we welcome the word of God. in heaven we thank you for this uh, evening for the day that you have been together with each and every one of us for the gift of life for protection care and even love and hope that is in us that keeps us going and that hope is in you we commit ourselves to your hands as we give you thanks for the many, many things that you have done into our lives. We bless your holy name. Even as we sit to listen to your word, as we continue learning from your servant, the prophet Jonah, that you will speak to each one of us, even those watching us from their homes and even the places of work. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, 
Um, praise the Lord. Those in the sanctuary and those watching us from home, I want to make uh, a very important announcement that will be made from now uh, all, all the way up to the time. As we have been saying that we have nev not opened the sanctuary for prayers, but last Sunday we met as finance, and we agreed, all of us, that we shall open the sanctuary on the 6th of September, and the following will be the order of our services. We shall open the sanctuary on the 6th of September, and the following will be the order of our services. The first service will be coming from 7 to 8.30, and that service will be a combination of both youths and our teenagers. The first service will be from 7 to 8.30, and it will consist of our teenagers and our youths. And so we are asking the youth leader plus the teens leader to combine forces so that we can have that service. Instead of our teens going to the fourth floor, they will all come plus the youths and use the sanctuary for the same. The second service will be from 9.30 to 11 a.m. The second service that will be English will be from 9.30 to 11 a.m. And of course, the third service will begin from 12 noon to 1.30. And both the second and third service will have hybrid, a mixture of both English and Kiswahili. Remember, we are all doing this. Please note we shall be expected to observe COVID-19 guidelines where everyone is expected to cooperate with the Ministry of Health. The rest, we shall let you know. This evening, as we share from the book of Jonah, last Wednesday we saw Jonah and we tried to explain the background of the book. And if you ask the four things that we said that you can in a nutshell say consist of the book of Jonah, the four chapters. But today we want to look at Jonah, after resisting to go to where he was, to go and announce to the people about the grace of God, and he decided to go the opposite direction. And uh, for us to get into verse chapter 2, if you escape verse 17, then you will not understand the whole chapter 2. Verse 17 of chapter 1 says, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. If you miss that verse when you are going to chapter 2, then it means that you will miss to understand in what context Jonah, even though, in fact, as uh, Jimmy Were was talking about, maybe you could have had a, a bad day. And I was looking back and saying, here is a man of God who is resisting to go to Nineveh, but he has instead gone to Tarshish, and the Lord God causes 
a big fish. What is the connection between this man of God and his God? And I was saying, even in the times when Jonah, maybe other people would have thought that Jonah did not have the connection. Yet, he was still connected. Because remember verse 17 says, now the Lord had prepared. And so many times, when the Lord prepares for us the wilderness, then it means we are not alone. We are not alone. Jonah, maybe you have all the reasons to think and even to judge and even to pass a judgment on Jonah and say, how could he have refused? And we shall see when we go through up to the fourth chapter. But when you read verse 17 and you hear the Lord had prepared, then you get to understand the relationship between God and this man, who is even in, in the midst of running away from his God, God was still with him. And that's where Jonah now comes, even though he told the people, remember in chapter 1, he told the people, I know I am the cause, I know this is happening, the roughness of the sea, and even losing some much of the cargoes that was supposed to be going with. I know I am the cause. Throw me to the sea. And because I am the cause, you people, you will experience peace. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, from the fish's, fish's belly. And he said, chapter 2 is a prayer of the same person who was resisting. But even though he's resisting, there is some connection with him and his maker. And he started his prayer. When he knew he was one, he was the problem. And he admitted, I am the problem. Throw me and everything will be okay. And Jonah now comes to his relationship with God. And I was asking myself, most of the times, most of the times when we feel we are not well connected with God, most of the times we have bitterness, anger, and we feel frustrated that God has not listened to us. But what did Jonah do? He comes and says, I cried out to the Lord because of my afflictions. And he answered me. I cried out. This is the connection that I, I want you to see. That God has prepared. And now Jonah is in the belly of the fish. In fact, the theologians will always connect the three days with the three days of Jesus in the grave. Preparing for a, another coming, even when people thought that the cross was shameful. But after three days, he came out powerfully resurrected and he came out to bring life. Jonah says, in my afflictions when I called you, you answered me. Out of the belly of the shield, I cried and you heard my voice. For you cast me into the deep and into the heart of the sea. And the flood surrounded me. Your billows and your waves passed. All the, 
your billows and waves passed over me. Then I said, I have been cast out of your sight. Yet I look again toward your holy temple. The connection again. Are you seeing the connection? He's running away from the Lord. And the Lord has prepared a fish. And the fish has swallowed Jonah. He's in the belly of the fish. And the connection is still very strong. That even though I am going through this, I know that there is a God in heaven. That I can cry to him. Even though I know the mistake is mine. Bana sifiwe. Do you see the connection? Are you, are you with me? Are you seeing the connection of this man? The man of God is running away from God. The Lord has not forsaken him. He has prepared a way for him. And yet he is not bitter. He is not angry. He is not even frustrated with himself saying, God, why are you doing this? I am running away from you. Why are you bringing me closer? Verse 5, the water surrounded me, even to my soul. The deep closed around me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the mornings of the mountains. The earth with its bars closed behind me forever. Yet you brought, brought me up my life from the pit. O oh God. My, oh Lord, my God. I want you to see again this man, the connection. And you ask yourself, in such a time, what will you be going through? Or what will be going through your mind? Is it bitterness, anger, resentment, being annoyed with everybody? And even blaming everybody else but not yourself. But Jonah composed himself. And he knew he was dealing with the Almighty. But he was human. He didn't want to go to Nineveh because as we shall finish by seeing. He knew that God was merciful. And verse 7, he says, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. And my prayer went up to you, into your holy temple. Those who regard worthless idols forsake their own. Must say, but, may I, but I will sacrifice to you the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay what I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And so the Lord spoke to the fish and it vomited Jonah into the dry land. I don't want to call these lamentations of Jeremiah because they were not. But this is a prayer of a man of God who is well connected with his God, that despite even him choosing to go the opposite side, there were very great connections that as Jimmy was saying, that even when we are going through the toughest moment, will there be an iota of faith, like the small seed Will there be something that even in the times that you think now, here, I will be finished? Can you make a prayer? Can you still trust in God? Can you still look up like Elijah? When he had reached his end and said, it's better to die. There is no need of me living. I have seen. Yet the Lord spoke to him and said, Wake up, eat, and drink. 
because the journey ahead of you is long. Jonah was running away from God. The Lord provided the fish. And while he was in the belly of the fish, he overcame anger, resentment. And he knew that even though he was running away from the Almighty, and as Job would be asked by God, where were you when I made the world? Do you know the pillar that holds the world together? In our miseries, and we know this many times, that when parents have not been treated well, and they are at the verge of their dying times, Many times they don't speak word of blessings. They wish they will leave you with all the pains. But this is not what we see with this man of God. He was still connected. And yet if it were us who were to come and judge him, maybe we, have, we would have categorized him. But here he is saying, when my heart fainted, I called upon you and you answered my prayer. When you are in the burial of fish, whether it is in Indian Ocean or Pacific, and you, are, you don't even know where, which direction, and so the Lord spoke to the fish. And it vomited Jonah into the dry land. In your most trying moment, whether you are right or wrong, do you entertain the enemy to tell you how you are hated, how, how people don't even understand the times that you are passing through, how people don't even recognize how you try much, and blaming anybody, everybody else other than you. We are learning tonight that Jonah was well connected. That even though he was running away, he was not overcome. But he, he, he had a very special understanding of who God was even when he had gone against him. And we shall see next Wednesday when he learns the, the, after this prayer he learns he's vomited into the dry land and what he does with the prayer. He prayed while it was the toughest times of his life. The three days again signifies the three days that our Lord stayed in the grave. But he came out powerfully. Do we come powerfully out of our trials, tribulations, temptations? Or do we come as hopeless, people without hope, even during these difficult times that we have gone through, where they are saying that maybe even after this, there will be a lot of mental cases, depression, because people are losing it. But Jonah never lost it. He came out focused and knew his mission was to go and tell the Ninevites, it is only 40 days and the wrath of God will come upon you. This evening, as you go home, as you are watching us from the comfort of your home or the place of work, what happens to you when you go through? And as we prepare ourselves for the next Wednesday, 
And as we read chapter 3 and see the prayers that were prayed, the person who was running away from God, God provides and he prays in this time, the hour of need. And so the Lord again, he's with him. He spoke to the fish and he's vomited. What is our take? As we think about this great man of God, Jonah, who maybe in the standards of human beings could have been judged, but God persevered with him to the point of accomplishing his mission. Let us pray. Father, help us always not to lose focus, but to always focus on you. And even in the times of need, in the hour of need, the difficult moments when sometimes even we cannot even whisper a prayer, but as you walked with Jonah, providing in every stage that as you provide for us, we shall become out victorious. And say that even though we did it our own way, but God saw us through. May your presence never leave us nor forsake us. And all the times we shall have the heart of David to come back to you and say, sorry, I am the, the one who is responsible for this. Give us hope in you. Give us love in you. Give us direction in you. So that whatever we do may glorify your holy name. Bless us and be together with us. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that wonderful message. And the message to take home this evening is to be reconnected to God. And uh, just as he has shared the word, maybe you are there you are wondering, how am I going to be reconnected back to God? He has already prepared a fish for you, and the fish is there. And wherever you are, if you're watching us, and maybe you're wondering, how can I be connected? We have our prayer numbers on the screen right now running. You can get in touch each and every time. And uh, maybe you want a special prayer this evening. I want to request our vicar once again, just to make a special prayer for you. Maybe you want to rededicate your life back to Christ. You had fallen apart, or maybe you had drifted away, and you want to come back to Christ. Wherever you are, just hold on wherever you are a minute so that a special prayer may be made to you. In that mood of prayer as we pray, I will request the praise team kindly to come and lead us in a moment as we pray for those watching over uh, uh, from their comfort of their homes. As we give thanks to him, as we remember that he has always walked with us, praise team.
Father, we affirm that you are the Lord and you, you remain the Lord even in the times like we are going through since March up to date. You remain God in our lives. You remain God in the families represented here and even those watching us from home. You remain God. And as we share this, we have shared this evening that even when Jonah was in the worst and the toughest times, he never forgot to call upon your name. We are calling upon your name even in this pandemic that has swept across the world. That Lord, you are going to restore families. We stand against mental health. We stand against any works of the enemy to use mental health and depression in the mighty name of Jesus. That Lord, you're going to encourage our children. That God, you're going to make them focused. That God, you're going to make them even know that there is a tomorrow. There is a future. That even though one year could be wasted, this is not everything. Because in your sight, a thousand years is just like yesterday. And so we pray for hope. We pray for restoration. We pray that, Lord, you will uphold your people. And as you did with Jonah, that you prepare ways and means of restoring them, O oh God. Even at a times like when it was tough that you came for your servant, that you're going to come for the families represented here. Those who feel that it is almost coming to the end and it is becoming tougher every day, we pray that there will be hope, there will be life once again. And as you are with Elijah, as you are with Daniel, as you are with great prophets, who went through times, tough times, that your people will also stand and wait upon you. We bless your people, Lord, and pray for peace. We pray for hope. We pray even as they go through tough times that you be there with them. We bless them in your name. We ask that you be with your people. And as you are with Jonah, do not leave them or forsake them. We bless your holy name that even in the time of times, Jonah had hope in a God. And as David said, that even though we don't know what to do, but our eyes are looking upon you. We are looking upon you, our God, that you're going to stand with us. And even this evening, as we go out, that you be together with us, with us even tonight. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Thank you for watching us. May you continue to be blessed. Praise and worship.